Yo, I got me do. I don't know how to get to you. I love you, I'm a wee old boy. 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 I love you, Today's program is very important and educative. We're going to be discussing about the hierarchies of the chiefs in the Oba Palace, how they have been contributing immensely to the greatness of Benin Kingdom. The Great Benin Kingdom is well known of its rich cultural heritage and tradition. The Benin monarch is the second oldest surviving monarch in the world. In Nigeria per se, the Benin monarch is considered as the most powerful and organized monarch in the country. Yoba of Benin is the paramount ruler of the Benin people. In most cases, the Oba is surrounded by a retinue of his chiefs. What are the duties of the chiefs in the palace? How are they defining the greatness of Benin Kingdom? The Uzamas, headed by Chief Olia, are not really chiefs in the palace, but the King Kranans. They are very powerful, and their major duty is to ensure the continuity of the kingship in accordance to the law of primogeneture. During the coronation of the current Oba of Benin, Oba Elwari Ugriga II, Chief Olia was responsible in announcing the name of the new Oba to the public. You must know that um, the Uzamans are not Oba's chiefs. It's not uh, the Oba that gave them that title. So that is why correctly we say that they are a geon because they have been there since the very beginning of the Benin monarchy. And when we are talking about Benin monarchy, we are not only talking about the second dynasty, the Oba ship. We are also talking about Ogiso ship, inclusive. So when we are talking about Benin monarchy, we are talking about the monarchy that stretched between these two dynasties. We agree that Dynasty 2 is a continuation of Dynasty 1. That is why in most videos that I do, I try to let people know that the present of our Benin by the second is the 71st king of Benin wow. and not 40th. Oh. Otherwise, you will start to create uh, that division that Dynasty 2 was never part of Dynasty 1. Everybody knows the story of how Dynasty 1 eventually uh, wriggled his way into Dynasty 2 continuation. So these Ejeon, I'm going to tell you how they, they became known as Uzama. Most of them still uh, doesn't agree to be for you to call them Uzama. <clears throat> that is because the word Uzama itself is denigrating to them as a people. Um, they were councils of elders. You know, <clears throat> in Benin, before the Dynasty One started, that is um, the Ogisoshi, we had a court Jongwe, the elders of various quarters. In the beginning of Benin, we had about 33 quarters that makes up Benin. So each of the elders from those quarters used to have a fellowship. To decide on the way forward of the kingdom. Maybe Ubini as, as at that time, or Igudu Migudu, as at that time, the name of the land. Doesn't doesn't really matter, but we know that they were it was not an established the rulership was not an individual thing. It was a collective uh, rulership where people come together to decide the fate of the of, of the people of 
the land. All right. Through that eldership, through that councils of elders, one of them emerged because he was crafty, he was brave, he, he had he was he was he was wise, he had all all the modern day attribute of a true leadership. So he was able to meander his way through and then that became the first recognized ruler. But one thing we must take notice is this he was part of these elders. So he came through the ladder of these elders and he eventually became their leader. Alright, at that time where all these people were the same, they all had the same equal power. Alright. He was not able to find a way so in a way that he becomes more powerful than these people. However, he also assured some of his trusted comrades within this circle of elders that when you allow me, when you support me to become the first ruler or king of this land, then I also have a place where you will be fully established that your role in the kingdom will be passed from you to your children and it will no longer be rotated just like it was. It has always been rotated. Uh, so eventually he got some of the support. Alright, so when that name of that king who came through the ladder of the elders and became the established ruler was called Igodo. So Igodo now became the first Ogiso of our land. That is, he became the first king of our land. However, I was not able to meet up with his promise of making these trusted comrades of it that they were all in the same circle of eldership. So it was now his grandson who became the second of Iso, who was a that was able to fulfill the promise of his grandfather. So when Ogiso who became who was a grandson of Ogiso Igodo became the king of Benin, he was not able to call four of these elders and made them part of the council of his rulership. So these four elders, the number one amongst them is Olia. Now Olia it's is a conglomeration of two words. Iha Benin divinity. Ole in Benin means owner. So owner of divinity. Words like this you can also see it in Olokun. Okun in Benin means water body, sea. Then Ole Okun. Alright? We call it owner of the sea. Just like it was also in Oliha. Alright? So the Iha divinity is also found in some other tribes like uh, Yoruba that has Ifa. Alright? Um, some tribes call it Afa. You know? These are different divinities. But the one of the Benin is called Iha. So the, the chief proprietor of the Iha is called Oliha. Alright? Oliha now is the head of these elders. After Oliha, the second in command is a Donhen. A Donhen. Um, however, sorry, I need to quickly make an observation uh, in my talk because uh, uh, it, is, it has not been proven in recent times that at the beginning it was not four of them, it was actually five. So let me quickly make that correction. So it was not four of them, it was five. All right. So, like I was saying, Olia is the number one. Then number two is a Dohe. Number three in hierarchy is a Ho. Number four, all right, is a uh, Holo Nire. Then number five is a Zomo. Now you must understand that this analysis that I'm giving is at the time of Ogisoe. At the very present hierarchical classification of these people, it is no longer a who that is number three. It is now a Zomo, who was number five, but now it's now number three. There was an event that happened during much, much later, during one of the others era, uh, that made uh, a donor in Benin, a mean, uh, 
Benikbe, you may not say me, no reason more you are the ego. I'm going to analyze, maybe you remind me on oh. how it became so hard. But as at the time I'm telling the story, at the time of the Ogiso era, it was Olia that was number one, Edwin that was number two, Ero number three, Ehor Ranira number four, Ezomo number five. Okay? Now, they have one singular function. These five elders is to ensure the continuity of the king line. That is their exclusive function. They must ensure that once a king passes on, there must be another king to take over from the now vacant throne. So they ensure that there is no there is no vacancy on the throne of Benin. That is their primary function within themselves as a group. They all have respecting functions. But the primary function they all collectively have is for the continuity of the kingship. And that was tested severally. That was tested severally. And I'll give two or three uh, uh, instances where that singular function that they were given was tested. Shortly after A, A, A died, A had a son, Oriwe. Oriwe was the terrible so at that time, died without an heir apparent. So this was the first test they had. But because they were inexperienced about this test, instead, they could not uh, muster the ideas on how to salvage the situation. So, there was not vacancy in the throne beneath for a period of 285 years. <clears throat> there was no, there was no Ogiso. Alright, until, if there is no Ogiso, there will also not be Olea, there will also not be, there will also not be Edoin, there will also be no arrow. So at the point in time, they were confused because the first instance at which primogenition was expressed as a form of kingship, alright? They failed in preserving it because they were highly inexperienced. It was the first time done. They 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 knew what primogenition is all about. So they didn't know how to salvage the situation. So after that 285 years, this council of elders also now came back and said, okay, what we'll not do now is before we started having a structured leadership, we used to our paths were restricted around um, quarters. Okay, now we have a battle the three quarters that makes up of this kingdom. Why can't we be selecting each is the oldest person from each quarter will become the oldest? So, so that by the time this old one does his own, he dies. Whether he has a son, he doesn't have a son, doesn't concern us, it moves to the next quarter. So that is what we call the Ojong ship, the Ojong Ogiso ship era, where it is the practice is called gerontocracy. The practice where the oldest person takes the mantle of leadership. All right. So there were nineteen of them that reigned in the name, or the name of the or whatever you want to call it, that reigned. So, but because of these nineteen kings that reigned, they were still they were not physical evidence that pronounce that pronounce that they should maintain this kind of kingship. Now when you have a leader you're supposed to have development. Yes. But that these nineteen kings could not muster development into the kingdom because they were old. So they could not do much before death calls upon them because they were already old. Yeah. So they now said instead one of the Ogiso, which is called Ogiso Oriagba, now said, Is it not better for me to reverse it back to the very beginning of time where the kingship was passed from father to son? At that time, we will have a young king who is well trained about the activities of what is expected as a leader, and he will be able to make 
to desirable change, positive desirable change in the Benin society. The owner agreed. But they also told him, remember, that we are five who have supported that idea of one person taking in charge of the activities of this kingdom. So we, you want to also uh, ensure that when you die, your first one takes over. Also ensure that when we die, our first ones also take over. All right? So a compromise was reached and an oath was taken by six of them. Six of them. Ogisoriaba, Olia, Edoin, Ero, Ehoronire, and Ezomo. Six of them took that oath at the shrine of Eimidu. Right, the Idu is the progenitor of our race, the Edo race. Now, we have a shrine. Eini means the spirit. It has an altar where that oath was taken. That these X, Y, Z applicable to the other of Benin, to the Ogisu as, a, as that it was called, is also applicable to us. The privileges that is applicable to him, that our primary duty that we swear before any do and any do is for the continuity of the the kingship line. All right, and should he, and they will also ensure that they take very good care of the crown prince. So also. When they also sojourn to the land of the ancestors, the Oba or Ogisu, as it was called, they must ensure that their lines, their lineage, their first surviving son, must be passed on to their first surviving son. Or if there is no first surviving son to the next of king, the same law that was applied to the Ogisu. To the king that was also applied to them. So it was not even the Dogi so that made them. They all sprang out from the same council of eldership. So that is why the kings of Benin is said known, like I said earlier, that they are not the chiefs of the Obar of Benin. They are elders of the land. They have been there from the very beginning, just like the the endless kings of Benin have been there from the very beginning. Alright? So we have a passed on, his son came in and all that. Now it got to the time the the the, the reign of Ogiso Ehenedem. Ogiso Ehenedem had no child as well. Alright? So they were faced with the same situation that they are faced at earlier on that they could not tackle but this time around they were already experienced about the situation that if it is not not necessarily has to be the the first surviving son if there is no if it, the king does not have any surviving son it has to be the nest of king so the land looked for the nest of king who was who was a young man called Ohede. all right the man made Ohede the Ogiso. Ohede is not the son of Ogiso Ehenedem. If you see the rankings of the Ogiso rankings, you see Ogiso Ehenedem, the Ohede. Ohede is a cousin, no, a nephew to Ogiso Ehenedem. So it was Ogiso Ehenedem's eldest brother's son. Alright? Or younger brother's son, yeah, but I think it's either a cousin or a nephew, alright, to Ogiso Ehenedem. So Ohede. That will be really over the, the viewers must pay very strong attention to him because it is that old is already direct. So the, the present of our being is a direct descendant of Ogiso Ohede. Because from that Ogiso Ohede, it did not break again down to the upper upper ship line. Alright? So it was maintained the, the likes of the Aurodos. The Abiyoye, the Odonige, these were all sons of Ogiso Owede. 
So it, it is what's transcended into the Oduduwa, the Oromian. So Oromian is also one of the direct descendants of Okuso Wede. Alright? At the, at the tail end, another issue happened. There was a vacant throne. Now, obviously everybody knows the story of Okuso Owodo. I had a son that was banished from the land. Uh, well, I wouldn't say it was banished. He wasn't banished. He was sent out to be killed. Killed, yeah. Uh -huh. He was sent out to be killed, but one way or the other, uh, he was saved. He was saved. All the circumstances, it's already out there. The story is out there. It's a very popular story. Now, he now left, he meandered his way and got to Ife, where the Yorubas, yeah. the Ife people now called him Ududuwa and all of that. Now, in that space where Ogiso Wodua died and there was no other kids and kin. Now, understand something very peculiar that you must understand. When Ogiso Wodua died, a Kaladaran was already on the run. The Benins were aware, these elders were aware. Now, because they knew that he was still alive, the crown prince, that is why they did not make any other king in the name. As a tradition demands, that should in case the present Oba or the immediate past Oba does not have an heir apparent, you give it to the nest of king. The Odiso Wodo had hundreds of nests of king, but the Aegean did not make any of the nest of king, the nest of Odiso, because they knew that the heir apparent is still alive. Instead, they now looked for an influential man called Evian and made him an administrator. Pending on when the son either dies so that they can look for the nest of king. Eventually, Evian was there and all that. Those intricacies I don't want to go through. But one way or the other, something led to the land said, okay, we have to go back and look for him. Since we are still always alive, that I only had led other Aegean in search of him. Because I had said about 200 years earlier, they are sworn an oath that their express, their primary job is to ensure the continuity of the kingship. It is the only role they have. Outside that role, they don't have any other role. So, in other words, it is only when and Oba has joined his ancestors, there is a need for the next Oba. That is when the rule of this Aegean comes into play. After which there is an Oba. However, the Oba does his kingdom and all that doesn't concern them because it is not their duty. Their duty is to ensure that there is an Oba on the throne. Oh. Right? So that was what led them to Ife to go and trace the crown prince and brought him. The crown prince will no longer come. Of course, we know the story. Instead, yeah. they send the son of Romeo that I became. The most important thing that they have done their duty, their sacred duty of bringing the nest in line in the king lines. All right. So it has always been like that. That is their primary function, and they were called a dune until because they had too much influences as a people. To either, to either, in other words, if you are the crown prince, you must be in their good books. Otherwise, if they say that you are not going to be the Oba, you cannot be the Oba. Because through them lies so much power. They make and they are make. At that time of history, I want to quickly say it. Say this. They were king makers. At that time of history, they were that powerful that it is true that they were king makers. Both their power started to reduce. All right, they, uh, other subsequent others saw how powerful they were, so they now started reducing the power. Till now, they are no longer king makers. They no longer will decide who becomes the other. The, the law of the primal generation decides that already. However, they are the one you cannot refer to them as a king crown house. They will ensure that every other is crowned, is coronated. Both in the earliest time, 
they were actually king makers because they had so much power so much influences to determine whether you are the other or not all right so that must be said clearly now Oromia came after Oromia. We had Eweka the first. After Eweka the first, we have um, Wakwine. After Wakwine, we have Hemi. After Hemi, you go to Ewodo. Ewodo was the one who now relocated the palace from Usama. Now, the reason he relocated the palace, the former Benin palace, was at Usama, present day Siloko Road. Why he had to relocate it? Because he was in the midst of this Aegean. And this Aegean were uh, almost. Uh, first amongst equal, like they see the other as first amongst equal. Like the other Benin is, you know, now like um, five twins or twins, <laughs> like like they are all age mates. Yeah, the other Benin is just like uh, the eldest amongst their age group. So it's not as if they don't see him as the king, just like the way every other adult person sees him. They don't just see him as a soul. They can talk to him the way they want to talk to him. So by the way, though. Who is now the fifth Oba in the second dynasty across the sixth Oba? All right, now wanted that freedom, that independence. That I'm the king of this land. Five of you can no longer at that time, they were already six at that time because Oloton has joined them. Oloton was one of the person that Odudu was sent with Oromia. Now, Oloton was added to them because he was sent. As the same function that these five elders already had to ensure that his son becomes the next over in Benin. Okay. So because that function that Udulu had given to Oloton is also the function of these five elders, elders yeah. they added him to be part of them. That since our function is to ensure that there's a continuity of the kingship. So that's how Oloton joined them, they became six. At the time of Obaya, whether they were already six. So they were really very powerful. So but I will not devise a means of taking the of relocating the palace for the sake of them that we can no longer be in the midst of all of them. If you look at it, Siloko very well. Siloko is almost like the center. Olias uh, Olias Palace is not far from Siloko. Edoan and Ezamon, they are they are very they have a proximity to Siloko. Then uh Isekere where you have a lot of quite a very very short distance too. So they were all there, like Make we go visit our, our guy. So it was like the Apadi. They see him as the Apadi. So he wanted to let them know he's their Oba and they must respect him as their as king. Their king yeah. So he now relocated the palace to the present day open. When he got there, alright, he now told them, Ian is Zama. Zama means those who make mockery. Those who doesn't see you as that too important, that they were always making mockery of him as their Oba, like or, a casual friend, like a casual friend. So the like, hand, so like he called them, he referred Oba referred to them as mockers. You understand? So that word is denigrating to them. <laughs> it was a denigrating statement that Oba was trying to by what was was trying to use in qualifying them. So over time, that word Azama changed to Uzama. So that is why they are now being addressed as Uzama Nio. Uh -huh. But it's a denigrating word to mm -hmm. them. Uh -huh. That they are mockers. Uh -huh. But if you see some of them individually, like Ero, Ero for example, Chief Ero, for example, if you see him, he will not allow you address him as an Uzama. But rather as an angel. All right. But in all of this, they are not the chiefs of the Oba. You know, you know what a chief means. A chief means that the Oba will call you and say that he wants to give you beats. All right. Oba do not call them to give them beats because it is the same. It's just like they will not call the Oba to become the Oba. It's the same. Uh, it is the same rule. Of continuity that holds that binds the throne of the other that binds them as well. So an Olea knows that his first son is a next Olea. Alright. Erol knows that his first son is an Erol. He doesn't need 
the other will be need to substantiate to become the necessary. But however, during the installation processes of whether the Aro or the Olia or the Edoin, the Oba has a role to play. Just like during the installation process of the Oba Abini, they are the most important in ensuring that there is a next Oba. Alright, so in reality, after some time during the reign of Obaiwa the first, alright, he not decided because of what they did to his father or bow him. All right, uh, a regicide was committed. The Benin stoned a particular about to death. So, uh, and it was that move was orchestrated by these Uzama chiefs. So, what the Obana did it, it, when Obaiwai now became the Obama of Benin, what he now did was to send his crown prince to be part of them. So it was a way to put one of his son amongst this Adion. Obviously the first surviving son of the Obama Benin is called a Daiken. Alright, he has his own quarter called Uselu, Daiken Uselu. So a Daiken was now added amongst these elders to make it seven. So that is why they are called Inyo. Seven of them. Now, but during the time of Akenzoa the first, Ezomo, who was number fifth at that time of history, no, at that time of history during Akenzoa, Ezomo was number four. All right, Ero was number three. Now, there was something that happened after the daily activities, having judge matters with the king. The king now said, let them bring food for his elders so that they can dine and eat. Not the Oba himself. Oba do not eat publicly. He doesn't even eat self, according to what the beings believe. <laughs> <laughs> so, so these agents, or better still now, now known as Uzama, were dining. So, the young man brought the calabash for them to wash hand. The only I washed his hand as the other from time in memory. After Olia, the second in command, a Dohan, washed his hand as well. Then on getting to the turn of the road, who was told the fort which was Ezomo said a provocative a, a, a provocating statement. Because that particular era of that era was very peaceful, humble. And I said, okay, since we shouldn't be quarreling over who washes hands first. Okay, you wash your hand. So that we don't go and be arguing in presence of uh, His Majesty. Okay, you wash your hand, let me wash my hand so that peace can reign. So, Ezomo washed his hand. Eruna washed his hand. Then, obviously, Eholo washed his hand. Then, Oloton washed his hand. So, making um, Eru the uh -huh. four. As the Oba was done, was about standing up, he now make the pronouncement. As you all have washed your hand today, so your ranking remains. Will now be. Alright? So, and Ezomo washed his hand before Eru. So, there is now a parable in Benin called Benikbe. Benikbe means wash your hand, make I wash my hand. In me normal see me, something make you nourish. Nor here is omo ya dinero. Me make is omo te senior ero. Otherwise, a ero has always been the senior, was has always been third in hierarchy from time immemorial. But in nine hierarchies, it is now ezomo is now number three, and ero is now number four. All right, <laughs> these. Specifically, are the functions of uh, the Uzamani, but individually, they have their respective functions amongst them. For example, the Olia is the one who puts the crown on the head of the other. That is his exclusive. All right, that is his function. On that night, on the last, on the twelfth day. 
in the ninth of the twelfth day after starting the movement from Uselu, the Olia, uh, the Oba, Nis, and that will be at Osama Palace. Thus, so many rituals. But at the end of the day, it is the Olia that will put the crown on the head of the Oba and also announce the name Nohaya the Oba, the name at which he will not be known as, as the Oba of the name. He will also be the one to publicly. Then the adoring deputizes. When you mean deputy should in case there is no Olia at the time of coronation, then the adjoin must not take that role if there is no Olia. Alright? Then the Ezomon is more like a warrior. The Ezomon of old is always believed to be the wealthiest of all as an individual. He's actually a very worthy man. From the days of old. Alright? Then they all holds the pot of wisdom. Alright? If we're propitiating ideas, we want to propitiate what should guide the other. That is a function. He is the holder of the pot of wisdom. Then the other on Ire is the shrine keeper of Ire. Ire, Ire, Ire shrines represent a whole lot of a lot of things in Benin. Then the whole autumn maintains the palace at Usama. Takes care of the palace at Osama uh, from the Sehero Lotum. Then obviously Daiken is the youngest amongst all of them. So when as an Daiken is about to become the Oba, he performs a specific ritual, quite expensive though. Where he will now have to buy his the seniority. You know, as an as a crown prince, it's is is young, is a junior, is the youngest amongst all of them. Not by age, by hierarchy. Alright? So when he's about to become the Oba Rabini, he will not buy seniority from these six elders. So that if you go to Olia's palace now, if you go to Olia's palace now, you discover that there's a picture where Olia was number one, was sitting at the left corner. Oba was sitting, the crown prince was sitting at the right corner. So left corner is senior. So Oba was at the tail end. They will not see another one again. Oba was not sitting at the left, followed by Olia. What has happened? The first picture was showing that that is how they are in hierarchy. Then the second one was now showing that Obra Benin, the crown prince now, has bought seniority from these people and is now their elder. It's now their eldest. And uh, before, shortly before after then, he attains the Obership. The Obership.